Chapter 1 It was around 11 in the morning on January 22nd. Tongsheng, my boyfriend, texts me. He has a fever. I'd like to go get tested. I'm afraid I got infected, he says. I couldn't grasp how that could happen. Wuhan has more than 10 million people. Why him? Tongsheng was born and raised in Wuhan. We've been together for three years. We had this huge dream. Make enough money to buy a house together. In the spring, when the cherry trees blossom in Wuhan, we're planning to do a photo book and choose a lucky day to get married. Chapter 2 Tongsheng went to the hospital. He told me that there are lots of people waiting, and he's been in line for a long time, but still far from grabbing a number. I asked him why he wouldn't just go to a different hospital, but he said they were all the same, that there are just too many people with a fever. From his description of things, I soon realized that what was happening in Wuhan was a catastrophe. I asked him what symptoms he had. He said he felt pain in his entire body. He had no energy and had to vomit. Tongsheng didn't manage to get a number and was feeling worse and worse. So we went back home. Chapter 3 I bought a ticket for January 24th. But soon after, I got a text about a refund. They've locked down Wuhan and I can no longer get there. I realize that the epidemic is worse than I thought. Thankfully, Tongsheng told me that he's feeling better. His fever has gone down slightly, and he isn't feeling weak anymore. Hearing that he felt better made me very happy. It must be a regular flu. How could somebody like Tongsheng get infected after all? Chapter 4 Second Day of Chinese New Year Tongsheng and I were supposed to FaceTime, but he never responded. I called his father, but he told me that he hadn't heard from him in a few days. So I called our community leader, and he told me that there was no one named Tongsheng on the list of infected people. I took a second to breathe. Then, he tells me that he found someone named Tongsheng on the list of potential infections. My heart collapses. Chapter 5 Tongsheng called me back in the afternoon. He went to the hospital again and was diagnosed with coronavirus. What worries me most is that, although he's in a hospital, the doctors put him under observation in the waiting room because his condition didn't seem serious enough and there were no beds available. Only patients who are no longer able to breathe are given a bed. Tongsheng kept reminding me that it wasn't the hospital's fault, that there were too many patients, not enough beds, and that the doctors had to give priority to those who were more seriously ill. Chapter 6 Fifth day of the Chinese New Year Tongsheng video called me. He said he had something to tell me and asked me please not to cry. He doesn't think he's going to make it. I cried throughout the entire call. Seeing the man I love one step away from death without being able to grab him. I can hear the noise of my dream shattering all at once. Our home, our wedding, and all our other dreams. Destroyed. Chapter 7 Tongsheng sent me a letter. He said it was meant for my future boyfriend, and that I would have to give it to him one day. When I opened it, my heart broke. This is what it said. When you'll see this letter, congratulations for being Nunu's new boyfriend. I envy you because you have my same talent. You've managed to be with a woman so beautiful. I'm going to tell you a few things that you should pay attention to. Keep them in mind. 1. Nunu is very stubborn. Sometimes she gets grumpy. You'll have to bear with her unconditionally. You'll have to protect her your whole life. 2. When she has a headache, right as it starts hurting, you have to take care of her. When I was around, I would massage her temples. Soon after, she would fall asleep and the pain would stop. Take note of that. 3. Nunu has one flaw, which I tried to fix, but wasn't able to. She binge watches TV shows until she loses her awareness of time. I don't think it's good for her. If you love her, help her change this habit. 4. Become her partner in life's adversities. 
I wish you to respect each other and learn how to forgive. Five. I don't know where you're from, where you live, what work you do. These things are not important. If you love Nunu like I love her, from the bottom of my heart, that is enough for me. Thank you for taking care of her. You have my blessing. Behind the letter, Tongsheng had left the password of his bank account. It had more than 100,000 yuan. It was all of his savings. At the bottom, he wrote, In my whole life, I have only loved you. Chapter 8 Chinese New Year, Day 8 Tongsheng has left us. He died in the hospital's waiting room. A warm sun shines now. My eyes are closed. Tears escape them as I face upwards. And only the sky is able to see the pain that I'm going through.